and our last speaker, Millie. Good morning. It's always fun being the last person to speak because every time one of the other parents spoke, I was like, oh yes, that's exactly, <laughs> that's it, that's it. Not only on a personal level, but on a professional level um, because I've been blessed and that I've got to turn my passion for parent peer support into a career. Um, but let me tell you where it started. And like Linda said, I've got some notes to make sure because I am talking about my daughter. Um, so I'm a family member, um, which means I am familiar um, with mental health and substance abuse issues um, on both sides of my family. Um, so I kind of know what's going on. Um, I'm also clinically trained. I have a master's in clinical psychology. Um, so I'm a therapist by training. Um, I am the one that all my friends come to, you know, from, from the time I was in, you know, middle school all the way up to high school, stayed the path you know, through graduate school um, and have training in doing assessments and evaluations and um, therapeutic interventions. So I've had some personal and professional training as well as years of implementation. Um, I spent 12 years in administration at a family-run organization, a large one statewide um, in the South. So I've done training for, for people who are working with families. I've done direct service with families. Um, I feel like I you know, have a handle on, on this whole mental health thing. However, I have to say I was not prepared for Caitlin. <laughs> um, my oldest, who is heading towards 17 right now, um, developed anxiety. I thought it's a phase. She's, she's gonna, you know, I mean, kids have anxiety when they're, they worry, you know, when mom leaves, leaves the room or goes to work. They worry if it's storming. Um, you know, they see things on the news and they worry about car accidents and terrorists and things like that. Um, well, by the time that Caitlin was 11, 12, it had morphed into something that, that was impacting everyone. Uh, if the wind blew, there was a tornado coming. And so in our house, it was like, we're all gonna die. You know, and she wants everybody to get into the closet. Um, if it's raining and we're driving, um, she's absolutely positive that we're gonna have a wreck. Someone's gonna slide into us. Uh, if it's snowing, you know, we're not gonna make it home. And she's having meltdowns. After school program, it storms while she's at school. She's in a corner crying and they're calling me and saying, you know, we, she's inconsolable. Um, she is absolutely sure that, that the roof is gonna cave in. So it didn't pass, and so I'm thinking, okay, this may be something else. Now, as Linda said, um, you know, people look at you when, when you have clinical training, they're like, oh yeah, you're seeing things. Well, I was kind of doing the opposite. I didn't want to see it. No, no, there's nothing happening. This, this is fine. The, the psychosomatic symptoms got worse, the stomach aches, the headaches. Um, we were already doing allergy shots, you know, two shots a week. So my daughter, you know, wasn't real keen on any kind of medication. I wasn't keen on that either. We don't want to put our kids on meds. Um, we don't know what the long-term effects are, and there's the stigma associated with it. Like I said, I can, I can definitely empathize with everything that's been set up here. So I got more frustrated to the point that I found myself yelling at home. Um, homework was a meltdown every night. Um, it was about perfectionism. Um, if she wrote something wrong, she would tear it up because the teacher would definitely give her an F if it wasn't absolutely perfect. Um, so I started looking for a therapist. I've seen it work. I know I'm trained that way. I, I've, I've tried some of these techniques at home, but I need to distance myself from it because I'm, I needed to be mom. I didn't need to be, you know, Millie, the assistant director of this organization, or Millie, the therapist. Um, I needed to be Millie, the mom. Uh, it's hard to find one that didn't know me professionally due to the field I was in, so that took a little bit, a little while, um, and I, I need it to be the right one. Um, my daughter didn't want anyone to know that, that she was doing this. We're trying to handle it at home, but it does come out in other places. So I found one, and she started to work with us, and things started to slowly improve. But the key to that change, and that this is what I want to emphasize today and over the next two days, is that the therapist partnered with me as the parent. We were partners. We worked together toward the same goal with my daughter. She listened, she respected my role and my knowledge, and she did the same thing for my daughter. At this point, 
You know, she was 12, going into 13. So together, we found what worked for Caitlin. And for my daughter, it was dance. Uh, she found that she could channel her anxious energy into dance, that she could express her emotions in a way that was acceptable. Um, she was winning competitions. Uh, I saw her confidence and her competence go up, her coping skills, to the point that now she is a junior in one of the top 100 high schools in the nation. Now, does she have anxiety still? Yes. Before every test, there are stomach aches. Um, but she's learning how to deal with that. She's learned coping skills through therapy because the therapist partnered with us. She found what was needed and she said, okay, you don't need me anymore. You, you've got this. And she does have this. Caitlin's doing amazingly well now. Um, because she partnered with me, she helped me recognize what was going on um, and with other coping strategies that could work for her. And um, we've been able to use that not only with her, but now with my youngest child um, who is gifted um, and has some, some different challenges ahead of her. Um, I tend to argue more with her than I do with the, the 16, almost 17 year old. Uh, the teenage years really are a diagnosis. Um, so I want to emphasize to you as a mother, partner with parents, your teammates that must rely on each other's expertise. As we go into the next couple of days, uh, talking about workforce development, really consider the fact that parent peer support providers can enhance any other service that's going on. I called my friends. Parents call parents first. Parents can be a conduit to partnering with those family members if you will use them. They do need to be respected as a workforce. They are an emerging critical workforce in behavioral health. And that's my passion with Fredla. So I'm going to close up by letting you know that not only is it about parent peer support, but we need research into this. Um, Fredla is involved in a number of research projects, a national data collection project for family-run organizations. Um, we have a PCORI grant that we're working on um, that has led us to develop a family research partnership where family leaders and well-known researchers work together to focus on family-driven care. We're working with the University of Washington on quality indicators for parent peer support providers. This is an emerging workforce, and it's one that can help you partner better with families. Thank you.